Welcome to another show. We are Market Overdrive, and we're hanging out in the new WGN studios today with the beautiful, is that correct? I shouldn't call her beautiful. I should amazingly intelligent Tammy Scarlett. How are you? I am well, and I don't mind beautiful. That's fine. Thanks. Yay, I appreciate <laughs> you. I just want to make sure I'm like PC here. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Mamedi? PC. <laughs> and with us as well, Mr. Graco Funes. How are you, Graco? Well. He's well. He's well. <laughs> Let's get out with Sorry it. we started late, guys, but we're going to get this show going here. We got <clears throat> S- Tammy Scarlett here joining us today, um, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about the psychology of purchasing a home. So without further ado, if you could tell us a little bit about your background, how long you've been in the industry. <laughs> sure. And let's get it going. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Tammy Scarlett. I um, am at Newcastle Home Loans here in Chicago. I got in the mortgage industry back in 2001. <coughs> and yeah, a little while ago. Wow. Um, and I uh, owned and operated <coughs> a, a brokerage there um, for a number of years. It was an all women's brokerage. Um, wait, 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 wait. No men worked there? No men worked there. It was. Oh, I love my, it. My that's How awesome. could you love that? That's wrong. It I would love it. Let, let her no, finish. <laughs> Tammy, this is your moment. But I'm going to come after you when we're done with that it one. It wasn't like no men allowed kind of thing. It's okay. just that she is. She it evolved it. that way. Um, women that I knew in the area and women that came to hear of us just kind of eventually we built out to an all women's team. Um, and we served on the, the state board there and we were in charge of the charity stuff. So we got to do all the, the give back um, organizing, which was really cool. Um, but my fiance is uh, in the military and he was sent here to Chicago um, for on a three or four year assignment. So in December we relocated here and I'm super excited to be doing oh, mortgage. So you, well, welcome you're to only Chicago. six months here. Just six months here. So how, much, how do you like it so far? I love it. Chicagoans are so nice. Thank yeah. you, well yeah. some. Yeah, compared to New Yorkers. Well, yeah, compared to, well, I've lived in other places. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you I could should. say it. <laughs> I don't know if I should. We could say it. We're proud to be <laughs> Chicagoans, so if you could say wherever. We're I've met really amazing people wherever I've gone. But um, I will say that when I lived in Boston, it, it was hard to like break in. This yeah. Everybody's got their own old school social circle. Now tell us why you lived Where's in Boston. Your accent? Or how, what is the Boston Tell us why you lived in Boston. I was only in Boston for two and a half oh, years since I was doing a graduate program um, at Harvard in anthropology. What? Oh, did I have you in that one? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that I, one class? I did, I, did two, I did two years at a junior <laughs> college, and I, and I still didn't pass, so it's all, right, all good. All right, gents, let's get to not about you, because so you always smart. like to take it there. We establish you smart. It's extremely in- Extremely smart. intelligent. And I think that today's topic is really relevant, because as we're seeing <clears throat> what I like to call this market that's, you know, again, going back to, like, no inventory, bidding wards, I think buyers are getting so emotional like they just can't you know they get into a transaction they buy it they put in an offer and then during inspection they just freak out and then they want to cancel the transaction because it's overwhelming Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people are feeling this so i love the topic of the psychology behind the transaction because it should speak and resonate to those people who are on the fence about buying and paying this premium what do you have to say about that yeah oh goodness there's there's so much to it because um, we're in an industry in, you know, mortgage like I am and real estate, um, like real estate agents and brokers, um, that is extremely mm. intense, extremely fast paced. And we're constantly being driven to increase production and, you know, close, we Sell, need to be efficient. close, yeah. Blah, yeah how yeah. many units are we doing and mm-hmm. how fast are we closing? Right. Um, how many showings are, you know, et cetera. And so sometimes we, we lose uh, the foundation of the personal connection that has to be established, that trust that has to be established with the, the client along the way. We might think that we're doing it because we're doing right by our client, by being um, effective in the details, you know, by doing our job. But if we, we lose that foundation of the trust, then we, we really have lost that transaction. So I think that with a client who's on the fence, um, you know, if, if there's somebody listening who is a client who's on the fence, the number one priority for, for you or for that person is to feel comfortable, feel educated and feel comfortable with the decision that you make. And so for us in the industry, as mortgage lenders or real estate agents, our, the onus is on us to deliver that education and to be totally okay and almost like make way for the comfort of their decision, regardless of if that's closing the transaction or waiting for waiting a little while. And if we are consistent and um, confident and present there for them in delivering that to them, then we'll be the person that they rely on to come to us for that transaction when the time is right, if it isn't now. 
Yeah, and I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes back into separating, I guess, the understanding and dynamics of a new agent versus a more tenure. I think you and I had that conversation, Nick, when you talk about like a new agent, right, that's chasing the paycheck and sometimes a client can perceive that mm -hmm. because they're so like eager to close that first transaction that they forget the fundamentals of building that relationship, that report with that client. Right. Well, you have, um, you have institutions that teach, like she mentioned earlier, look, at the end of the day, it is a sales environment, whether the realtors or loan officers, whatever the case is, and you have some institutions that are constantly pushing production. And I think sometimes when you're pushing production that hard, um, the staff gets so programmed to sell who's next, sell who's next, sell who's next, call the next lead, sell, sell, sell. And they forget that there's humans on the other end. And when you're talking to first-time homebuyers, they're, they're, they're nervous. And, and I think that a client can always feel that. Um, they can feel you being uh, very pressured or, or pressuring on them, or they can feel your uh, ants, if you will, constantly coming at them. Well, what's so hard to decide? Why can't you figure it out? I mean, you can really start to talk somewhat condescending to a consumer versus nurturing. And I think, you know, help me if you think I'm wrong, but they need a lot of nurturing, especially the first time. I mean, they're worried every night until they close. Right. I feel like they are. So tell me, what do you think it's the psychology behind that, though? So if you have four examples, I'll just give you one plain example that I'm going through. I have a couple, young couple. They saved a lot of money. And for the budget that they're looking at is um, they, they don't like the product. It's, it's, it needs work. It's not going to it's not going to be turnkey. It's not going to have like the best kitchen, the best bathrooms. Um, but it's in the neighborhood that they want and the location that they want and the size that they want. So they're going to have to give up condition for location and size. Um, but the wife doesn't want to concede. She's like, I understand we have a budget, but we've saved so much. I want it to be an amazing purchase. I want to be happy here. So there's that disconnect. What would you say? How would you advise them to proceed? Or do you just have them wait until they save more money? Yeah. Um, well, I think that it, it would come back for me to the same bottom line of education and comfort. They need to be educated on all the options. Um, if they buy that home now or if they wait or maybe they want to look elsewhere, maybe this maybe the set of concessions isn't exactly right for them to agree on. Maybe a different set of concessions would be more appropriate. Um, but giving them all those scenarios to be able to, to um, feel comfortable with whatever decision that they do make and being that person that can deliver those options to them and be right there with them uh, through that process and to communicate to them that it is okay to choose not to buy now if that's what's right for you. Um, I have clients that sometimes they come back to me and they're just like, we're so sorry. We feel so bad because you spent this time with us and we just, but we really feel like we should do this one more term of renting before we commit to this area because we might move. And I'm just like, you don't apologize. My goodness. Are you kidding? Don't, first of all, don't anybody ever apologize for you doing you and you being you and don't apologize for, you know, having somebody work with you in a service that they provide. It's one thing to be a total jerk mm. to someone who's providing a service to you, right. but you just making a decision that is right for you. Right. You have every right to do that. And it's super good for you to do that. That's an abundance mentality thing. It helps people around you do the same thing. So um, help get your customers to that point, no matter what the, the outcome is, where they're totally comfortable, ma comfortable making the decision that's right for them. I completely agree. I mean, I always tell my clients, like, when you go into this home and this is where you envision yourself hosting, you know, Thanksgiving or the holidays, this is the home you're going to be so proud that you're going to want to tell your friends about it. That's the property for you. But if you're, like, pushing yourself to, like, wrapping your brain around it because you're like, oh, I don't know. You know, we're not the ones paying your mortgage. You are. That's right. the biggest investment. And it's going to be your responsibility, not mine. So a lot of people say, I don't want to waste your time because I know you're so busy. Well, I'm like, well, no, this is my business. This is what I want. And it's not, it's not a revolt. You know, like, I want to make sure that they're happy so they continue to come mm. back correct is that not the mentality oh totally yeah you want you want to be that person who's there for them that can be that trusted advisor when the moment is right they they call you or when they have a question again they call you when they're thinking maybe the time is right they call you because you've given them a safe space to process all that information you've been consistent about delivering them the information that is educating them so that they can make that confident and comfortable decision and now you're there now you're their person that's like that's like a lead pipeline retention 101. <laughs> so I'm going to make this a little controversial because we wouldn't be market overdrive unless we were a little bit controversial. And please come down, Grockle. Do not get all hysterical. And you, don't worry. It's not going to be that crazy because I'm not you. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. given the fact that you did run an all-women office, I get the word. The word that comes to mind is like nurturing, right? Women are mostly nurturing. We're going to go above and beyond just to make sure people are comfortable. So having said that, what sets you apart from other lenders that are in the business? 
as okay. a woman. <laughs> under, well, <laughs> well, I think that, <laughs> I, I, th- I think that men can be nurturing too in a transaction. Nick Thank can you. be nurturing. Thank they, you. Nick. <laughs> I wasn't talking about, <laughs> I wasn't talking about you, Grocco. <laughs> it's getting edgy in here. Um, <laughs> but I mean, when I when I had my mortgage brokerage, we um, we got a little shop that used to be a retail space in an old building in downtown where Frank Sinatra's mother used to own <laughs> a hat shop. That is so and cute. And it um, had these giant glass windows with wood trim. And we brought in these black chandeliers and rolled out big rugs, put in couches, espresso machines, and we had in a library, built a library into the wall that was open to the public to come in and read about financial wellness. And you would just kind of stroll in, uh, people would stroll in off the street, they'd get a latte, they could sit and read a book, they could talk I to us about that. mortgage. Um, so yeah, we were very minded, and I think naturally so, because we all kind of came up with that together as it evolved. Um, we we were minded towards being nurturing towards the client and making them feel comfortable. Um, but I, I think that every, I do think that everybody has the potential to do that. It's a matter of, you know, sometimes we get our, our goals, um, our cognitive interpretation of our goals. We let that get in the way of what we really want, um, what outcomes we really want, what personal fulfillment we really want in our lives. So if we're looking at, okay, I need, this is my unit closing goal for the year. This is where I need to be. Um, and we're just laser focused on that. There, There is some value in that, right? Because if you have no goals, then this is why smart goals are such a big deal. If, if you have no goals, you're, then you're moving directionlessly. So you've got to set those goals so you have a direction. But the, that's not the fuel that drives us f- with the momentum and the trajectory to actually achieve those goals and to actually achieve the, the fulfillment of where we want to be in our future, that future version of ourselves that, that we envision if we take the time to do so. So I think that it's making those differences for our, ourselves, like digging a little deeper, making the connection with the client, remember, remembering why we do <coughs> what we do um, that allows us to, to fulfill those things in a, in a meaningful way. And I think that's important for like, you know, people in our industry, but how would you translate that for a consumer or someone that's listening that says, okay, like how, what am I doing? I'm buying a property and I just get, can't get through this transaction because obviously there's factors that we can't control, right? I don't control the market. The market is what yeah. it is. We're, it's premium market. Um, so everything, you know, everything's going to have a price increase. And so people get really nervous. They get overwhelmed. They feel like they're taking advantage of, you know, that whole victimized feeling that they get mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Um, sure. What do you, how do you advise them to get through, navigate through that? Yeah, it's challenging. First time home buyers, um, they, I, you know, I feel bad, <laughs> but it would be the same for any, if you have an area of expertise that's, that's your wheelhouse and um, any other person around you doesn't, you're going to be so much more comfortable in it because there's no surprises for you. You, you know the ins and the outs of it. You know how to navigate it when things get tough. Um, for them, it's just a big, giant unknown. They're going to know maybe what they saw their friends go through or their parents go through or what they read online. Um, and that's, that's all they have to go off of. And if you think about it, there's a lot of pressure. You were talking earlier about the psychology. What's the psychology um, of the transaction for the buyer? And there are things that come into play here that are bigger than just um, finance. I mean, certainly financial is a big piece of it, right? Because it's a lot of money that you're talking about, um, no matter what kind of home you're purchasing. Well, it, it reco- it, and it goes back to like relating it to money, access to it, right? We're not having big incomes. We're not having like a lot of disposionary income where people can just say, oh, whatever, let's just spend, spend, spend. People are a little bit more cautious with the way they spend money, I think, in comparison to how we used to buy before and buying at a premium. Now people are very cautious. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that deals a lot with people's psyche when it comes to buying and, you know, signing and actually pulling through and attending that closing. Yeah. Well, and there are also um, cultural influences. So the psychological factors that are affecting an individual as a buyer, like what maybe their family expects of them or what their peer circle is doing. So if you have a group of friends and everybody's, you know, buying a home and you're the only friend that doesn't have a home, then you really need this transaction to work in in some way because that's contributing to your sense of belonging. Um, So there are other things at play every time with every client and every transaction that that are beyond what we see on paper beyond the buyer interview to see the buyer consult to see um, what they're interested in in a home and if we take the time to connect to those things uh, then we have the opportunity to connect with that buyer on a deeper level and really deliver the thing that's going to make them happy in the long run all right 
we got to get on a part of our show that's called the Nitro Question. So <clears throat> I'm going to fire a question off. You don't have to answer it right away. You can think about it for a few minutes. <clears throat> we'll come back in about five to ten minutes, and you can answer it. But the Nitro Question today, um, is there a sponsor for the Nitro Question today? Oh, is it is it Newcastle Homes? <laughs> yes. I don't know. You guys change it. Sometimes it's... <laughs> Okay, so well, today's Nitro question is Newcastle. Newcastle.loans. Newcastle.loans <laughs> yeah. is the site. Okay, Newcastle.loans is the sponsor of the Nitro question. So, question being, <clears throat> in 18 years now, since you've been doing mortgages, what is the saddest, most horrific story, since we're talking about nurturing and, and, and um, people that you know are nervous or whatever the case is, um, what's the saddest first-time homebuyer story that you can remember uh, they kind of fell apart, fell apart for all the wrong reasons. Not blaming you. But I don't have to answer it now? No, you can think about it. Not. Yeah, you got, you, we'll give you like five to ten minutes. Okay. And that's your I, next question. I have a question for you, Tammy. Um, the nurturing side or the psychology side, when, do you feel that paying more attention to that helps you transact higher numbers? Oh, absolutely. When you're when you're paying more attention to the why and the personal connection, it's not as though you let go of diligence or you, you know, don't follow through with everything that absolutely has to happen. Um, just like I, I was telling my group on the Facebook Live earlier today, um, I choose to work in flow. <clears throat> I choose to work easily. The one you swore on, right? That does, huh? The, the, the <laughs> lie that you swore on today, The right? lie that I swore okay. on earlier this morning. It happens. That was Thanks in your flow? It happens. That out. It's okay. <laughs> that was everyone, my flow. If yeah. everyone wants to see her swear, go to her personal page, Tammy <laughs> <Yeah>. Scarlett. <laughs> what is it? It happened. Is it Tammy Scarlett? No, that well, was obviously. on Rise for Women in Real Estate. That's the Facebook page. So, yeah, you can hear me swear there. I like that. Um, <laughs> so, You're human. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I choose, I choose to work in flow and I choose to work easily. And that does not mean that I, you know, don't work or that I work slower than other people or that I get less done. I'm a highly proactive, highly efficient person, um, with lots of irons in the fire. I juggle lots of stuff. I take me time when it's necessary. Um, but the grind is c counterproductive because if you are forcefully, you know, trying to move things forward all the time, you're, you're expending energy that you don't need to be expending so if you think of it in an efficiency standpoint you can if you go with the flow with with things um, and don't try to force them so much then your outcomes are going to come with less energy expended you have more energy to put towards other things that if you're strategic about it you can get more of what you want accomplished talk about strategic though because you know if you're dealing with a bunch of first-time home buyers or just nervous home buyers you could be a mm -hmm. second time home buyer third home third time home buyer, mm -hmm. but you're not sure about this property and you're halfway through the process. You think you like it, whatever, whatever. So how do you fit in all this time? Because somebody, you know, the phone's constantly ringing. Hey, Tammy, I'd like to talk to you. Hey, Tammy. And then what you think is a two minute conversation turns into 20 or 30. Files start to back up. Oh yeah. I know. I so how, how's time management working at that? Well, point? for, I mean, you're talking right now. I'm thinking of you. You could uh, call somebody that you know that is a highly nurturing individual and put together an event, have all your first-time home buyers, um, you know, offer them something for their time and let them know, hey, this is going to like make or break the, how smooth your transaction is. You can either run into unknown hiccups or you can get totally immersed in, I got this. Um, it's up to you. And then set that up for them <clears> on the get-go, address it all at once, and you'll have fewer questions as you go along. Um, that's, you know, that's just an example of something that would be a strategic way to still make that personal connection and to maximize your time. I like that. Can you explain to me how, what, how, what would you advise me to do if I have a client that, um, you know, it has hit a bump, they've hit a wall. They, we were showing properties at this point. Basically, I'm just chauffeuring people around, showing them properties after properties after properties. Mm -hmm. I would they, advise you to work for Uber. <laughs> right? I should. <laughs> um, but in general, right? So if you're working with a buyer, and I think that a lot of people find themselves like, I just had a conversation with Tim today, my attorney, and I said, we're going to have to kill this deal. My client mm. just doesn't feel comfortable moving forward. And of mm. course, we have that five-day inspection attorney review period where you could go ahead and, you know, basically kill the deal, rescind your offer. I mean, it, we, we're not supposed to do it, but well, can I, can I, what am I going to do, right? I'm going to make them buy it. Um, and we looked at seriously a ton of properties. So it's not like we didn't do our due diligence, but the buyer just didn't want to pull through with it. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that client? Where do you go from there? Yeah, that is such a good question. Um, yeah, give I, us some psychology on that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, 
I have a, a coaching background. I spent the last several years um, while I was pursuing an MBA and then this other graduate degree um, doing personal and at business. Harvard. Yeah. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> doing um, personal and business coaching <laughs> um, that I call freedom coaching. And um, again, it's a holistic approach, like I approach practically everything. Um, but really, where we start every time, no matter what the issue is, no matter who the person is, is what's underneath. What's the thing that you're not looking at? What's that thing in the core of you that is actually making this not okay right now? So for me with a client, this is just me personally, this isn't like a how-to steps one through three, but for, for me personally with a client who's stuck like that, um, I want to help them be unstuck. And again, it doesn't matter if that means they are not gonna buy a home or if they are gonna buy a home. In that moment, the unstuckness is the priority and I need to be able to, to help them draw out where where that's coming from because once they're free it's going to be a hundred percent clear like once that that stuck point is free yeah. it's a hundred percent clear to a person what their thing that they want is so so that's you don't have advice. to i love it you don't have to waste time with with clients and i think that if you have a client that is doing that with you keeps pulling the plug and starting over pulling the plug and starting over just stop and say hey like don't i know you might feel compelled on your end to show them 25 more properties but pause and say, hey, just like with your best interest at, at heart here, um, I just want to ask what you think might be causing this pattern of something, you know, coming back up over and over again. Um, because if we can figure out what that is, then we can save a lot of time in this process and get you honed in on exactly what you want, regardless of what that outcome is. Right. And nobody doesn't like hearing that. People want that. And I you know? love that you say that because you put it back not just on us. Earlier you started saying, you know, the realtors need to slow down. It's not just transactional based. It's more of like, you know, hearing your client speak and what they're saying, what they want. But sometimes buyers are not going to tell us, right? Because they don't want to tell us because they're afraid right. that we're not going to negotiate in their best interest. So they're not going to give us the full scoop. But I love that you're encouraging people to listen and say, take a deep breath and, say, and find out within yourself what's preventing you from making that decision. So on another case, I have a client who's so stuck on this price point, on a budget, on a monthly carrying cost, and doesn't understand the dynamics of like you're going to become a homeowner. You're not no longer renting and you're going to be in a different area. So give yourself the luxury of homeownership at this mm -hmm. point because it's, it is going to be an upgrade in lifestyle. It's going to be an upgrade in pricing as well. But there's something within them that I know why they're not you know, proceeding, but I'm afraid to say it because it's not in my place to say it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think it's important for buyers to go back and sometimes just stop, stop looking because at this point, you're just chasing your tail. I literally told them that today. I said, this is a, you know, we're going around and around. You're not, you're making the same decision. You're seeing mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. property in Chicago. Mm -hmm. There's bungalows, there's ranch homes, there's Georgians. They're always going to be cut the same way, right? So if you've seen them all and they don't fit what you're looking for, then it's time to just stop and ask yourself within, not the exterior, but within mm -hmm. what is really stopping you from understanding what you want or is that yep. what I'm gauging is what you're saying? Absolutely, yeah. And it, I mean, you you might have a pulse on it, right? You're seeing it from the outside looking in. Right. So you might have an idea of what it is and maybe it would be not as appropriate or professional to just try to call that out for some, somebody right? you don't have a personal <laughs> like, relationship with. did I just say that? <laughs> but you can always create a safe space for real answers and invite your client to, you know, share whatever's really going on with them. That's great. So, we got to come back to the question. Oh, gosh. Uh-oh. Make it awesome. The horrific Wait, experience. Did you even have the saddest story <laughs> where it just kind of all caved and went down and, and you're like, wow. And, and you know. Are you blushing? I don't know if I have one. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. Do I have any sad first? You have to have some kind of sad story. I don't story. have any this sad story. This is turning into a nightmare. And it not, I'm not saying it's your fault. You know, like, sometimes you have a bad realtor in the mix. Sometimes you have a very indecisive well, client. I recently had a client, and just to give you maybe a lead here that may, might help you out. I had a client that took almost a month just to figure out which lender he's going <laughs> with. And everyone's like, dude. This can't, ha you got to start an app. I'm like, he'll call me when he calls me at this point. He finally called, we start, he's late. He's, he already sold his home, closed. He had to stay in a hotel room for like two, three weeks. I mean, he didn't give me any time to do a loan. That's kind of tragic. I mean, it, it was self-inflicted wounds because I started right. the loan. He's closing on his house literally like in a couple days after I started the loan. So, I mean. I guess I'm being there's dramatic some, in my interpretation because I'm thinking like sad. Yeah, like someone and there's I some sad stories and... though that have happened. Like, it could be wacky. Come on, it, it, it could be anything. Yeah, ask her. Another you got one. 18 years. You know how many stories I, I can like dig I, up with 23 years? 
Well, I didn't work 18 years straight because I, I took time off to go to grad school. Okay, and you I got did 16 years. While I was in grad 15 years. Um, but, I, I, you know, I think that the I have seen a ton of stuff go wrong. And I, I saw, I did so much in the beginning um, <clears throat> because I actually started in processing and um, then ran a, a processing center for an international company. And I was exposed to so many scenarios that in a, in a short period of time that I, you know, learned and then right. how to create systems to prevent the vast majority of those things from happening. But I think we, you know, we all know what the, the horrible things are that can happen in a transaction, lack of communication or an appraisal coming in, you know, or people not realizing that their property was in a flood zone and it was their dream home or oh, yeah, getting, getting, uh, um, halfway through construction before realizing that something that, you know what I mean? There's all of those things oh, are do, yeah. equally tragic. Um, and, but you know, you, you dot the I's and cross the T's ahead of time and, um, prevent them. So did they get out of that? Well, they were already in the middle of construction and they realized there was a flood zone. That sucks. Uh, no, the, the one with a flood zone, that was a new, the, that I'm thinking of, that was a new, um, development oh. and it was in an area that like nobody was building in. And so no, everybody went and started putting in offers on these homes, not realizing that it was in a flood zone and the flood insurance was insane. Oh, yes. And oh, yeah, yeah, it was really, I think the saddest story that's happened to me more than once is new couple, new newlyweds or engaged, oh, please. excited. It's happened more than once. Um, they're literally going through the walkthrough. Uh, they're, they're going to closing tomorrow. And someone got fired. That sucks. Okay, that's the sad. That's the uh, that that's, that's the really one that has sad. happened to me at least four times. One guy tried to keep it from his fiance. Didn't oh, want to ruin no. it, and he, they had to find out at the closing. What? Yeah. That they couldn't close. Like the, well, at least one lender. This is back in the nineties. One lender did a VOE verbal on the day of closing, all the way to the very end to make sure he's still working. Verbal to make sure he's both people are still working. So you got this pregnant uh, lady with one kid, uh, like a two-year-old with her, and she's going to the closing with her fiance. They're buying her first home. And um, we went to verify his employment on the day of closing, and he got fired two weeks ago. That is insane. So she's at the closing and found out. <laughs> That's horrible. That's You win. You know, my mind, <laughs> and, and, and just so I have my mind, I happened to so be the realtor on that one, so she called up and she's like screaming at me like, I fired him. I'm like, lady, just get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you are listening to Market Overdrive, and thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you found this information informational, information, informational, that's a good one. Wow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you were trying to read a thing <laughs> earlier. You guys should have heard Grant go, Rita. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today. Um, but anyway, yes, please do share this information, and obviously, where can we find you? Uh, I am at newcastle.loans. If you go to that website, I'm, I have a my own page there Yay. and if you are a real estate agent a woman in real estate um check out www.rise.style and uh or our facebook page which is rise for women in real estate um because that's a it stands for real talk inspiration sharing and empowerment and we are the rising tide that is raising all ships here in our industry in chicago Wow, I Carla love it. Carla wants to join us. Can I join? Grocker, we're opening a mind. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Men. <laughs> what? And the other acronyms that she said. <laughs> you don't have you a cool mantra. Or we had... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, go I'm voting for you. Whatever. Leave okay. me alone. Thank you. We will be back here in a week or two weeks, actually, on Thursday at 530. You can catch this show on Facebook, YouTube, our website, marketoverdrive.com, and, of course, the WGN Podcast Family uh, I believe it's called WGM Plus, actually. So subscribe to that bad boy and don't miss any of these shows. I want to thank Tammy Scarlett of Newcastle Homes for being here. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. I have a feeling on more than one occasion. And I don't want to thank Carla Mina, and I'll see you later. See you later. Have a good weekend.